Okay, so uh, thanks everyone for joining us today on, a, on your lunch break. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about immunization beyond COVID-19. So I'm just going to jump into introductions for the company first. So uh, today we're going to, we have Dr. Michael Anderson, who's our chief medical officer, who's joining us, as well as Mahmoud, who's going to be running a portion of the demo as well as the slide deck. And of course, myself, uh, I'm the CEO and founder of Verto. So uh, if you're new to Verito, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about who we are. We're a Toronto-based digital health startup. We're founded in 2017. Um, we're doing a lot of work to digitize the patient experience for health systems, uh, notably Unity Health. But we've also been part of the vaccination rollout. We've rolled out around about 22% of all the booked appointments and a lot of the behind the scenes appointments to support our hospital partners. Um, we've also used our digital twin platform to support um, new, new model uh, COVID testing projects, such as those for Air Canada, um, some other customers like Vector Health and McMaster Health Labs as well. Um, but yeah, I'm here to talk to you guys about uh, how our vaccination pl pl platform and how our product team has adapted the platform to support what we're seeing and as an emerging need for how to manage vaccines as we go forward. So go to the next slide. And so I want to hand it off to Michael Anderson now, and he's going to talk to us a little bit more about the interesting emerging issues that we are seeing in, in healthcare as we come into this fourth wave, but also uh, a kind of a little bit of a new normal return or a hesitancy to do so. So maybe Michael, if you can give us some of the context. Sure. <clears throat> so we're, uh, we're heading into an interesting season. Uh, the last 18 months has been uh, all COVID everywhere. And we're um, now starting to have to think about how we're going to exist in a world where COVID coexists with many other aspects of health. So one of the interesting things out of the last 18 months has been the uh, historic low rate of influenza infections, uh, not just in Canada, but frankly, worldwide. And um, that has been largely a product of our uh, social distancing, our mask wearing. A lot of the practices and protocols we brought into place around COVID also protected us from influenza. Um, so that was that was fantastic, but that bears a, a large problem this year. And people are moving about again. We have in-person uh, school resuming. We have an opening up of the world. So we have people in contact with one another. And there's a, a serious concern that this year we may encounter a severe flu season. And that's for a variety of reasons. Um, in, in typical years, there's sort of a passive immunity that people are acquiring, incremental immunity that we really didn't achieve last year. So there's a number of reasons factoring into a concern that we may have a severe flu season. And what does that mean? Well, we vaccinate people against flu for a number of reasons beyond just prevention of disease and uh, morbidity and mortality. It also has an impact on protecting hospital capacity. Hospitals run, um, unfortunately, we, we routinely run at or exceeding our capacity. And every year, influenza outbreaks um, limit our ability to provide other types of care during the peak of the influenza season. So part of vaccinating against influenza is to protect uh, hospital capacity. So in a year like this, where we have COVID, pressuring our hospitals, anything we can do to reduce influenza rates offers further protection. And that has a great impact because it's not just about COVID, but when, when we load up hospitals with people sick with respiratory illnesses, we squeeze out our ability to take care of other issues, other thing, other um, ongoing things. And so how, so influenza even impacts things like hip and knee replacements, because if our hospitals are filled with people with respiratory illnesses, we lose our capacity to do routine care as well as urgent and emergent care. So the uh, other piece of this beyond just respiratory illnesses were routine immunization programs last year, often ones run through public health and in schools, things like uh, HPV and hepatitis B vaccination in middle school um, largely disappeared or were in many ways uh, last year, we were unable to adequately do this. So we not only are, are looking at vaccinating the cohort that fits into that 
that frame this year, but catching up on people who missed that in the past. So as we as we tackle this, we have uh, a, a, an importance of looking at vaccination as more than just COVID vaccination and extending it out to other uh, diseases. Now, one of the things we, we certainly learned through COVID when we had mass vaccination programs was that we can rethink how we deliver programs like this, public health programs. And uh, so a few things about self-scheduling became really interesting. Um, and I, I work in a health equity space, so I, I found this quite intriguing, was we almost never gave people the autonomy to self-schedule in healthcare. So in fact, we found that giving people the ability to self-schedule was really empowering and transferred autonomy to patients and caregivers um, for a sizable amount, a sizable proportion of the population. And how does that relate to health equity? Well, um, the phone still matters. And if everyone has to queue to a phone to get an appointment, it overwhelms the system. It's unmanageable. So by decanting the portion of the population, which is sizable, that are interested in booking their own appointments in did, that are digitally engaged, that are technologically uh, literate, we actually free up resources for the, 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 the portion of the population that aren't comfortable with that modality, um, that still wanna use the telephone, but they're no longer in unmanageable queues. And frankly, it allows us to redeploy um, health human resources, people in the most effective um, manner possible. So there's a bunch of pieces of this that I think we learned collectively during COVID. And I really hope we don't go back to how we did things before because we have profound opportunity to deliver care in a more equitable and frankly, a more, um, uh, a more um, resource friendly fashion going forward. I think at that point, Michael, I'll, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, yeah, thanks for that context. So um, I'm going to jump into some of the things that we've done to kind of deal with this uh, emerging need. And so um, first to set some context, uh, the primary delivery of our, our platform to support vaccinations uh, or COVID vaccinations uh, was a substantial challenge. We booked over 4.5 million appointments on our system. Um, at times we'd have surge capacities of 300,000 people trying to go after things directly. But um, a lot of the, the conversation around flu vaccinations is now commonplace within society. Um, you know, people, there is demand and there is demand to, to, to get follow up on all these uh, services that they have. But the challenge is different because in a, for COVID vaccines, it was about how do you get the entire population to book appointments so that they can get vaccinated. But now it's shifting back to something that's a little bit more familiar for normal healthcare delivery, which is how do we get these select and at-risk populations to be aware of the availability of our services and the vaccinations, and then to be able to book for them without, again, overwhelming the system. And so uh, the challenge, we had to adapt our platform. Our, our platform was uh, very optimized for the delivery of COVID vaccinations. Um, it, uh, a lot of people might not know this, but the public facing component of what we did for our platform was actually the, the lesser used functionality. Behind the scenes, a lot of people use tokens and private links to help book nursing homes and different activities. And so what our platform allows you to do is allows you to open up the services and the booking capability while still being able to manage flow. So you're able to open up 80% to the public while still having 20% for the at-risk or priority populations. So how does this apply in the new world? Well, we actually have three ways that we've adapted our platform to better support our clients in, in the new normal, in the new service delivery model. So I'm gonna take you through each one of the three functionalities now. So the first problem that we had was that uh, you know, delivering a COVID vaccine means here's a link, book for your appointment, it's a COVID vaccine. Um, but now you have an assortment of services that you need to book. And so uh, you're, if you have marketing campaigns, if you have awareness campaigns that are linking out, they'll come to your website. But now there's an assortment of services that they need to list. And you have different places that with different availability that need to serve that. 
But what you want to do and the opportunity is that you can create the dialogue and engagement directly with the patients. And, and the technology that we're suggesting for this is a digital front door. So the way that we've enabled a digital front door for our clients is the, the concept is that as you register different services in our platform and make the availability, we've created a single pane that can show the availability and what types of services that you have and map it on top of a geolocation service that's able to show it. So we're going to go through a demo later on, but the, the strength of this concept is that now you can drive people to a service front door as opposed to a specific COVID registration or HPV vaccination and you let them enhance their self-booking capability. So, uh, you know, if you have certain clinics that are able to provide the service, but others that aren't, they're able to discover this information themselves. Uh, and best yet, if there's an assortment of services that they need to register for, it gives them the ability to manage that booking process from start to finish. And we'll do a quick demo after I've gone through the functionalities here. The second functionality that we found that was demanded was that, Every time we thought we knew it, like if we knew, we thought it was, okay, you need HPV vaccinations, you need flu. Every new person we talked to, they had three other services that they were trying to put out, whether it's prenatal education, addiction services, mental health. What we just realized is that the, the, the concept of managing services, and once you have a digital front door, the opportunity is that you can just list all the services that you actually have availability for. And so uh, the way that we've approached solving this is we've created the ability now, instead of it being something that is uh, per deployment. So next slide, please. Um, instead of you having to go inside and set it up so that you, know, you have a COVID optimized booking process or a clinic does one service, we've now made it so that every clinic or location can uh, manage an assortment of different services easily self-serve. And then also we've enabled the ability for once you've actually created those appointment types and those services to be able to share it with uh, more uh, administrative or maybe non-privileged users. So you're able to share a calendar link to show occupied uh, times and the bookings that we have in the system while still driving all those service types at a unit level. And so what this helps uh, do is, you know, during the COVID vaccine rollout, it was a centralized organization and allocation of, of dosages. However, in this new model, you can transfer a lot of that autonomy onto the actual sites and locations so that they can manage it themselves. Okay, and then uh, the last functionality the last adaptation that we did was uh, patient roster pre-registration. And this, this, the problem here is that um, unlike vaccinations where it was, we don't have a set list, we just need to, it to make it open to the public and get as many appointments as possible. The new challenge is you might have rosters between, you know, some of the, some EMRs have pre-registered rosters. Some uh, school boards have consent to communicate to specific populations. But this, you know, traditionally, this is a large phone activity, or it's something that would be done by a physical location, which might not be uh, uh, capable of being done now. And so our approach to solving this uh, first started with the ability for you to upload uh, a patient roster. So we assume that you have a registry of people that you can reach out to. And so our system now allows you to upload that registry of people who have communication consent. And then that will load them into an engagement pathway who will then drive them towards a booking of that roster's designation. And so you can go inside there and then couple that with the ability to create custom tokens. So these tokens are one-off links for specific types of services. So now you can load a, a protected database on our PHIPAA secured service and then have it actually reach out to them and encourage them to book into a, a, a restricted link. So that could be a public link or it could be a private link that's not accessible to the public. So you're able to silently manage these appointments behind the scenes or combine it with a public offering as well. And so the nice thing about the engagement modality is that we can set a cadence of reminders. So you can send like two emails and maybe an SMS follow-up. And then instead of having to reach out to the entire population, 
our system will be able to give you a resulting population that hasn't booked so that uh, an actual, you know, a nurse or a clinician can follow up and do those bookings face to, uh, you know, by phone directly. And this kind of couples onto Dr. Anderson's health equity issue, which is instead of spending all the time doing the booking, now you're focusing on the people who weren't able to secure that appointment. So um, I'm going to now hand it over to Mahmoud to quickly run us through, uh, uh, you know, just a short demo of how our digital front door works. Um, and then he'll just show you how that works with our existing booking platform. Take it away. Thanks, Michael. Um, so initially when you land on the digital front door, as Michael was mentioning, you have the ability to select from services. Something I wanna highlight here though, is what we've done is we've created a dynamic set of forms that can be combined together in order to create a coherent story to help people along their journey of decision-making. So if you were to do a COVID vaccine, everybody landing on the page, like Michael mentioned, is there for a specific service, either a first dose or a second dose of, of COVID, and now we're bringing on the third dose. Here, we're starting to see people are combining a number of different services that are not necessarily related and choosing what it is that you've come to the page in order to perform can be a little bit complicated. So in this instance, choosing a service is just, I land on it and I know medication review, I have my iconography and my text, I can proceed from here. But something a little bit more complicated such as uh, follow-up treatments or a more complicated journey can involve things like a questionnaire or a survey. People can fill in a number of different questions and as they proceed, we decide where it is that they need to go, um, as well as uh, what service it is that they need to receive. If I proceed from here, um, I know that I have selected my medication review. The first thing I need to do is enter an address. I'm just going to put in my postal code, um, L4C7Z9, hit the search. So it's going to tell me that there's a number of locations that are available around me. I can choose to sort by closest location or earliest availability. I'm okay with closest location. And when I click on it, it's gonna showcase the contact information, uh, where the location is, all the other services that are also available there. So I know if I also need to do my blood pressure check, I can uh, append that to my service post. And it also informs me of my next available appointment. So what this lets me do is skip the pick a date, pick a time, uh, pick a location and just pick a service, say that I wanna book now, and I can see that Thursday, September 9th at 4 p.m. is the date and time that was selected for me. If I do need to change that, I'm able to go back and modify. At this point, I fill in my contact information and I hit confirm selection and I'm booked in. If in the onboarding process, it required me to fill in my date of birth, it required me to fill in my postal code, all of that can get automatically inputted into this form as well in order to streamline this onboarding process. And essentially what we've done here is taken a number of different services offered by a number of different clinics, appended them all together into a singular digital front door. And um, we've created a way for us to either have a very simple streamlined workflow or something a little bit more dynamic um, to onboard your patients and meet your needs. Yeah, yeah, and just to add in through the management of the clinic and the availability of services, this service list will automatically populate. So instead of you having to, you know, normally when you guys roll out the flu vaccination program, you have to coordinate communications and logistics of each clinic, then how you communicate and share that and how you demonstrate availability. Um, in our platform, all that's combined together. So once you make a service available, you're also able to select the type of cadence or engagements that you want you're able to pre-select a rostered population that you wanna reach out to, to book that appointment. And then it's basically there. And so the choice of you being able to host that on your digital front door is an option that's given to you as a unit, but it's integrated in with the actual management of the clinical uh, clinic availability. Okay, so I'm gonna just jump back to this slide because there's a few other, um, delighters that we have with the, the, the release that's going to support this. So um, one of the big things that we're looking to do is um, we're, we're, uh, we're now rolling out a canned analytics platform that allows people to actually use future booking and current booking amounts. 
so that they can actually kind of real time uh, track coverage within their region as they go forward. And so what this lets you do is it lets you actually now um, have an active tool that looks at the booked appointments to determine what level of coverage and where is more effective so that you can combine this with local campaigns to do more targeted and door-to-door -door kind of addressments or focus on certain communities based on lack of uptake. And so this is one of the things that was kind of high in demand during vaccinations, but unfortunately uh, we were busy dealing with scalability needs for the 4.5 million appointments. Uh, but now we're actually pushing this uh, in tandem with the, the platform to book and to manage the clinic flow. And I think that's it. Is there another? That's it. Yeah. So uh, that that's basically what our approach is. So just to kind of reinforce our what we're we're saying in our messaging right now is as regions and as health systems kind of go back to the new challenges that we're going to face in this last quarter of the year. Um, what we're saying is that the the engagement and the self booking capability that you've had to demonstrate. Um, to serve the population uh, that you have for COVID vaccinations. We're giving a platform that lets you combine the deferred uh, services and, and um, uh, appointments alongside the COVID vaccination capabilities. So if you're doing third dose or boosters, that's just another service that you can list on your, on, on your digital front door. And it gives uh, the opportunity for there to be a more decentralized management of those service capabilities. So instead of relying on the central coordination that was required during the COVID vaccine rollout, now you can put that power back in the hands of the clinics and the providers who are delivering it uh, and give a single dashboard for uh, citizens in that community to reach out and, and choose how their service is delivered. Um, I believe we have six minutes, so I can open up for general questions if there are any. I didn't hear any. If you have a question, please just please shoot. Michael, can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead. So um, one of the last piece about the insights and gleaning information about where your coverage is, is really, to me, uh, is unique in healthcare because one of our challenges is our feedback loops are often delayed by six or 12 or 24 months. So we don't get insight in a timely enough fashion to actually iteratively change what we're doing. So the ability to see that you know a particular area code, a particular area has a low vaccination rate, lets me, lets me change my approach to engagement on the fly, like in real time. And that's a bit of a challenge. Getting feedback a year later isn't all that helpful. Getting feedback as we go lets me alter my engagement strategies to increase uptake. In fact, in a very granular way when you're using postal codes. Yeah, that's the that's idea that we wanted to get to. Um, we, we realized uh, some of the challenges with opening an analytics platform is that we needed it to be intuitive so that there was an ability to understand coverage without having to be a data professional. And so uh, we're now confident that we found a balance between that. And so it's really one of the, the more desired tool sets that we've seen some of our earlier adopters comment on. Hey, uh, Michael. Hey, Peter. How are you? Not bad. Thanks very much, guys. Um, there's a lot there, I'm just trying to grasp it all. So, um, so thank you. Um, use cases. Might you, you know, expand on, you know, your top two or three use cases for Canada and whether or not they might apply to the U.S. market, which I know is of utmost interest to you? Yeah, Please. yeah for sure. So um, I think that what we're hearing from uh, people that we're talking to is the first use case is obviously um, flu shots alongside the booster and third dose that we have right now for the COVID vaccines. But the just as equally important one is the deferred vaccination schedules. So since schools weren't in session, uh, things like HPV or shots that were given to uh, a younger population 
have been deferred and some of them it's hard to track them because they would have been inside one school setting last year but now they might be distributed amongst different uh, school systems at this point. And so you have to have a combined roster as well as public option to be able to, to catch up on that. So those are the two that we see from our end. Would, would those be consistent stateside also? You want to keep them tight and, and, and focused on those two? Michael? I think that the pandemic has really uh, decoupled Canadian cadence from American cadence. They're, they're facing different challenges over uh, south of the border. But right now our focus is on supporting our Canadian partners. I want to get a question from Christy. Christy, you got your hand up. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, so I'm just trying to understand, um, looking at the use case for school-based immunization or school program as we call it in vaccine preventable disease. So we're looking at students who have, you know, probably three cohorts or two and a half cohorts of students who have missed their grade seven and grade eight vaccinations. So three different antigens or three different vaccines that we're looking at. I like how you could pick a front door um, or, or a, a pain within the front door to, you know, you could call it school-based vaccinations. Once you get into that pain and you demonstrated a kind of a, a bit of a, an area where they would fill out um, different pieces of information. Is there an ability to also add some prompts there? I'm just wondering how customizable is that um, page that you fill out? And is that something that Verto has to do? Or is that also in the hands of, um, like, is that also being decentralized? I'm just thinking about things like, we often need them to upload an, an updated copy of their immunization record. And so we would have to send them to a link to do that. Um, we, we often need to provide them with, you know, a bit of information, like if you've had your COVID vaccine, please don't book your appointment for school vaccines until 28 days have passed. So things like that, I'm just wondering how much customization is available in that sort of second page where they're filling out information where those information prompts might be needed. Yeah, so that's a great question. And it's actually one of the highest demand requests that we had during the COVID vaccination rollout. So to answer your question, first of all, that's what uh, Mahmoud talked about, the ability for us to put in screening criteria as well as custom information screens is, is very easy to do. Um, and then the ability to change the registration form based on the service is something that we can do as well. Um, transparently, uh, right now, the way that it would work is you'd have to put in a service request for us to configure that workflow. But on our product release schedule, we have a release that allows you to actually pick the, a canned kind of registration workflow and then uh, select the fields that you have for screening as well as registration uh, through the admin panel. And so that is something that we're looking to do. But in the meantime, as we move into the, the last quarter of this year, um, it, we do support the ability for you to put in a service ticket based on each service that you have provided for us to configure that workflow to make sure that it's supported on the front end. Okay, um, I, I, I think the second thing to pride in our product is that we pride ending our webinars at 12.30 so you guys can actually get your lunch. So we're gonna host, uh, we're gonna host this video online so that, and we'll send a link out to everyone who subscribed for today's session. Again, uh, if you need to reach out, please reach out to me or call us if you have any interest or any questions that you want in what we talked about today. And once again, thanks for spending your time with us uh, this lunch and have a great day, guys.